Hey guys, what's up? Dion Taylor here. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how you can use Power Automate to send out scheduled emails with Dynamics 365 data. So the exact scenario is that I want to send out an email once a week to all of my sales executives with a list of all of the newly created opportunities of the past week. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely go ahead and watch this video. So here we are in Power Automate, and as you can see, you can obviously start with a template if that's something that you wanted to do. Now, I wanted to do this video because when I was searching for this template, summary, email, I found that this guy, this is what I want to do, right? But you can see here that this connector is the old deprecated Dynamics 365 connector. So you, you don't really want to use that. Obviously you can start with this, right? So you kind of have some of these steps in there, but I kind of found that, you know, creating it from scratch might be a good way to do it as well. Again, if you want to take a look at this, just go ahead and click into that. You can kind of see what they did, but I'm actually going to start from scratch. So you can just go ahead and, and click into my flows here, or you can obviously first create a solution and create the flow that way as well. You can see here that I've already uh, looked at this a little bit as well, but let's just go ahead and click new. And we want this to be scheduled, right? So that's why I'm going to click here on scheduled from blank. And so of course you have to put the name of the flow in here first. So let's just go ahead and do that. Schedule opportunity email. Let's just say we are going to start that today at whatever time, let's say 10 o'clock or whatever time you want to pick for that. And we want to repeat that probably not every minute, probably every week. And we said earlier, I want to send it out on Mondays. So now we're just going to schedule that. As you can see, it's going to run every Monday starting at this particular date, which is obviously a Sunday. Okay. I'm just going to hit, hit create. And you'll see now that the reoccurrence that we just configured is already here. You can see runs every Monday, every week, and I can edit that as well if I want to change that frequency from here, obviously. Uh, and then I can change right the days from there as well if you made a mistake there. So the next step that I want to get through is I want to get the past time. So we're going to search for get past time. And here we go. This is what we want to get. And I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. And the interval, this is really the time interval, interval between the current time, as you can see. So we want to go back. I said we wanted opportunities for the past seven days. So I'm going to say seven days. And that is it. That's the only step that we have to do right here. So the next step is going to be the listing of records. And I like to use the common data service current environment. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to click on list records. Obviously, again, you got to make sure that you are in the correct environment where you also have your data right from the common data service stored that you want to include, obviously, in that email. So let me just go ahead and set this to opportunities. Obviously, you can start typing this in as well and just go ahead and pick that. And then you can do some advanced options in here as well. So I'm going to filter my query, obviously, right? Because we said I only want to include opportunities that were created in the past seven days, right? That we just said over here. So what you can do if you don't really know 
if you're like me, you don't really know how to write those filter queries, you can actually use this wonderful tool that is called the XRM toolbox. And there is something inside there. And one of the tools that I really like, I mean, there's a ton that I really like, but the one we're going to use here is the fetch XML builder tool again inside of XRM toolbox. So let me just go ahead and pull that up. And here it is. And let's just go ahead and open that up. So I'm going to delete what I have in here, delete entity. And as you can see, the way you can start with this query builder is basically you're going to pick the entity. So I'm going to say, I'm going to look for opportunity. And you can then, you know, select attributes if you want that as well. But I just want to go ahead and filter. So I'm going to click on filter and then you can pick if this is an and or an or filter. It doesn't really matter in this particular case for me, but I'm going to put it in the filter. Oops, the condition, I mean, and then the field is that created on fields. And that needs to be, let's see, greater or equal. And then you can put a value in here. I'm just going to say 0101-2020. And what you can do here is you can click here on view. And then you click on power automate parameters and that will bring up this window. So I can now go ahead and copy this and I can get out of here and I can go back here to my query and I am going here to click on my filter query and I'm going to paste that in here. But obviously we don't need this date, right? Because we need to filter that on that past time, right? Seven days ago, we want to get opportunities that were created before that particular date or during that date, right? That's why you're, you're basically using this greater than or equal to that particular date. So what you have to do is you have to grab that or set that single quote. Then I'm going to do past time and then again, do that single quote. It's kind of hard to see here, but these are the single quotes. And here's another one that I just added. So now we have opportunities filtered out to only show the ones that were created in the past week. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and now create an HTML table so that it's going to look pretty in my email that I'm going to send out. So you're going to do new step create HTML table. Let's see, here it is. And I want to create that obviously right from my list record step. So I want to get the value that list of items. And then if I click here on show advanced options, I want those columns to be custom, right? So I want to get like, here in the header, I want to get my opportunity ID and then I want to get the opportunity name. Name and then I want to get maybe the owner and then I want to maybe get the stage and I probably also want to get the date created. So you know what? Let me actually go ahead and make this date. And let's make this name. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put those fields from the list records into here. So I'm going to get my ID. I actually have a custom opportunity ID field in here, which is text. So that's my ID. I'm going to skip over the date for now. I'm going to go ahead and do the opportunity name, which is a topic field, the stage, which is the pipeline phase, and the owner is owner full name, right? Now I could put the date in the created date in here, but that's actually going to be a problem because it's not going to be correct. And that's because of the time zone that that date is in. So basically what I need to do is I need to convert this 
that date field that created on date field from UTC back to the time that I'm in. So that's what I'm going to do and I can do that with an expression. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get rid of this and I want to put in the expression. Now, what I really needed to get is really that created on field, right? So let me put that back in here so I can kind of show you created on. If you kind of hover your mouse over that, you see that it says this field is referred to as item. And then it's kind of hard to see, but I will zoom in a little bit item. And then you have two you know, opening bracket, closing bracket, question mark, right? That's what I want to use. So what you can do here is I can just inside here, this cell, I'm going to create select all, and I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to start with my expression. Let me get rid of that now. So we want to convert from UTC. This is what I want to do, right? So I'm going to open a bracket. And then I am going to put, right, the timestamp is that created on field. So I'm going to copy that in here. So the only thing that was not in there was this at sign. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. So this is the created on field, this, this whole thing over here that I just, that I just grabbed, right? So what I want is I actually now want to set a format or I basically want to not set a format. I want to convert this into the time zone that I'm in. So I'm going to do a comma. I'm going to do a space, right? Destination time zone is what it says over here. And I actually found here the destination time zones. Let me zoom in a little bit again, right? And I'm looking for Eastern time. So I'm going to do control F Eastern. There we go. Eastern standard time or US Eastern standard time. Right, so I'm going to use this. This sounds pretty good to me. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to put in again a single quote and I'm going to copy, right, US Eastern Standard Time. And then I'm going to do another comma. And then I want to actually format it. How do I want that date and time to show up? Or do I just want, you know, do I just want the actual date? I don't care about the time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a space. I'm going to do another single quote. I want to do two D's and then I'm going to do slash two months and another slash and then uh, Y, 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 Y four times. And then you can see here, here's my closing bracket and that should be it. So I'm going to click OK and I just converted that date field from UTC into US Eastern Standard Time. So this is great. So in my next step, I'm going to send the email and obviously you can just go ahead and use this send an email or you can do send an email from a shared mailbox. So basically what I did is I set up that shared mailbox and that's what I'm using to send those email messages from. And if you want to know how to do that, let me actually go here to exchange. So you can just go ahead and then click on mailboxes and then add at the top here, you can see add a shared mailbox. So you want to make sure obviously that you can send messages right from that particular mailbox as well, because otherwise your flow is going to error out obviously. So let's go ahead and go back here. So I'm going to do this, send an email from a shared inbox and this is where I'm going to be able to pick that mailbox, right? That's where I'm sending from. So it's called sales communications. Here we go. And then here I can put a two, an email address in here. I can send this to individuals or you can again, set up a group or what the other thing you can do is a distribution list, right? And you can add members to that and just send it there. I'm actually going to send this to sales reports at whatever that email address is. Let me actually copy and paste that in. That is my email address that I'm going to send it to. Then I can put in a subject, right? So maybe something like new opportunities since last week right? Whatever you want to put in there. And then what I want to do is 
I want to put something very nice in the body of this particular email, but it's actually going to be some HTML code. So what I want you to do is click here on this code view. And then as you can see, now I can just go ahead and copy and paste the HTML code directly inside of this. And I actually got the HTML code because I was using right that template that I showed you guys in the beginning. That's kind of where I got that. And then I just, you know, I tweaked it a little bit. So the code is actually on my website as well. So I will drop that in the comments as well. So you can just go ahead and copy and paste that. So let me just go ahead and get rid of that. I am going to paste it in there. There you go. Hello, please see below for the opportunities that have been created in the past week. New opportunities. We're going to get a table, as you can see here, with a nice border. And then what we want to do, you can see that right over here, insert the output of the HTML table right over here. So I'm just going to get rid of all those spaces. Oops. And the body of, of the output of this HTML table, that's what we want to drop right over here. So you see that it's right over there. I just click just like that. And that is it. So now I'm going to save this flow. And then let's test that. So let me go back here. I can actually go ahead and run this. And I'm going to say run flow. And that was done. And now let me go ahead and see what happened here. Well, it failed, so something wasn't right. And what happened here? Let's take a look. Let's click on edit. Something in here that it did not like. Oh, it is missing that single quote. Sometimes that happens. I don't know why. Let's just put it back. Let's save it again. And let's run that one more time. Again, let's hit run, run flow. And there we go. Let's take a look here. Now it succeeded. So let me pull up email and show you what that looks like. And here is the email message that just came in. So let's take a look at that. And you probably want to compare this also with an advanced find, right? To make sure that you're actually getting the correct data back. So we'll do that in a second. So here are the two opportunities. 334, this is obviously not correct. So I did something wrong with the date here. So let's go back. Here is my convert from UTC. Let's take a look at that expression. Convert from UTC, item created on, that is correct. U.S. Eastern Standard, that is correct. Oh, I already see what I did here. We want the month first and then the dates, but we want to do the month with caps, then the date, and then the year. So let me just go, get, go ahead and update that, save that, run, run the flow, and let's take a look. Here is the new email and we can see that the dates are now correct. We have opportunity 211 created on 09-29-2020 and we have opportunity 277 created on October 3rd, 2020. And you probably, when you're testing this, you want to take a look at your data in Dynamics 365, right? So I basically said, hey, only show me, you can see filter by anything that was created within this past week, right? So you want to make sure that you actually compare those two. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button. Make sure you check back again next week for yet another video. Thanks so much and have a great day.